So Australia is currently the, the largest consumer of resources um, globally. If everyone was to live like Australians do, we'd be using currently 5.2 Earths to sustain ourselves. Um, clearly that's not sustainable and we need to dramatically change how we live. So my name is James McLennan, I'm from Be Alternative uh, and I've been their general manager for the last few years. Um, I've been in the environmental sector since university where I studied outdoor environmental education. So I was teaching for a few years and then started my business in the sustainability sector about eight years ago and have since been working consulting and in education in sustainability specifically. So climate change is really the forefront of, of everything um, at the moment and it's really becoming apparent um, in everyday society and uh, all around the world. We've seen some pretty significant weather occurrences uh, in the last couple of years and continuing so. I think it's really important that we all take responsibility for this um, and every single thing we do makes a difference. So it's, it should be at home, it should be in businesses uh, and we should be starting to, um, to really think about our, our practices and our day-to-day -day living as well. A common misconception with businesses is that being sustainable or being green comes at a cost. This is not the case and is, is quite a misconception. In actual fact, implementing some sustainable initiatives within to your workplace can actually have quite the opposite and save money. Um, if done effectively, there is some massive savings to be had. So not only is it a financial benefit uh, for the business, but it's also having a really positive environmental impact as well. The other misconception is that it's too hard um, for their business to implement certain practices. This can simply be achieved within businesses by just taking a look at what they're doing and what their values are. Looking at it from a perspective of being too hard uh, shouldn't be the case either. There's some really low hanging fruit around sustainability and sustainable initiatives that can be simply implemented into a business. Recycling is perceived as a quick fix, feel good activity which Australians do pretty poorly. Um, recycling is actually the second best thing from landfill. If we look at plastic specifically, around 12% of plastics in Australia is actually recycled. So even though we think we're doing a great thing when recycling, it's actually not the case. Better than recycling is actually avoiding um, and, and reducing in the first place. Um, so workplaces who say, yeah, we're recycling, it's, it's a start, but there's, there's actually a lot of better things we can do really quickly. Things like composting um, is, is a great one. We can actually look at organic waste and divert that from landfill. Composting is a really easy win that's far better than recycling. Looking at a business and how it's set up, um, sustainability needs to come from a holistic approach. So it needs to incorporate everyone within the business. So looking at who works there, who's, who's on site, who's off site, their impact, um, who's involved with the business from a, um, a financial perspective from the top down essentially. So it's not just all the staff, but it's also contractors, cleaners, the waste contractors specifically, but it needs to be looked at so everyone is aware. I think that the first thing that a business uh, should be doing is prioritising sustainability um, and putting that into their strategic plan or actually um, putting a time allocation to that within their business structure. So whether that's actually appointing someone um, within their role to, to have sustainability um, as a focus, or it's actually giving a time allocation to a staff member to actually work on this process uh, and what they're doing as a business, that's really important and, and probably the number one focus. So the second thing would be looking at their, their business from a, from a holistic approach and actually looking at, at what they're doing uh, in their workplace and outside their workplace too. What's coming into their business and what's going out of their business. So whether that's the, the energy they're using, the water they're using, the materials they're using, or even their stationery and paper and things. We can actually have a really quick impact by changing uh, the way that they procure items uh, and purchase items of the business as well. But then looking at the outputs as well, obviously through the waste, through um, you know, water, etc. as well, we can, we can get a really good snapshot of where that business is at and that's a great, great place to start also. Doing a waste audit, as I, as I mentioned earlier, is a great place um, to start because you do get that baseline data. And waste is often quite an easy target where you can have some massive financial savings, but also in reward you get the really positive environmental impacts as well. By starting with a waste audit, it's simply getting a team of professionals in, like from Be Alternative. We can come in and actually sort through the waste that's generated and sort it out into different areas. So recyclables, general waste, organics, and then we can break it down into further um, streams as well. From that, we get some baseline data of where your business is currently at. Um, and we can also look at ways your business can progress forward through implementing the really simple initiatives and streaming of resources 
resources and so they're being diverted from landfill essentially. The tourism sector is a great place uh, for people to engage in sustainable practices uh, because they're having a good time and they're away from their home. Uh, if we can actually give them a really positive experience while doing something conscious and sustainable as well, it's a great way to educate and actually have a really positive impact that flows on uh, into their home life as well.